What up guys, JP back at you once again bringing you guys episode number 35 in my 2017 slash 2018 shelf by shelf series, a series in which we look at my entire collection and talk about each title a little bit. So uh, we finished the Vestron video collector series last time and we're going to move on to the Arrow video slash Arrow Academy slash a uh, couple of MVD titles that I have. Um, which I all have lined up here. I don't have a ton of arrows, and most of the arrows I have have been sent to me via like a screener. Uh, they used to just send everything that they released, but as of now, they no longer do that. So I would get a lot of stuff that I didn't really necessarily want, but I didn't want to be taken off the list either, so I wouldn't really complain about it. Anyway, now I only get the stuff that I want, uh, so a lot of these titles I didn't really, you know, care for or, or want to see necessarily, but I, I do have a lot of stuff that is still sealed here. So first up we have um, Animal Factory. Uh, this one is kind of interesting looking just because it was uh, in a blue case uh, when arrows are usually known for their clear cases. In fact, this is the only blue cased arrow I have. Actually, I lied. I have one other one. Uh, but this is Animal Factory. I don't really know much about it, but it is a film by Steve Buscemi, and it stars Edward Furlong and William Dafoe. That's kind of interesting to me. I thought this was an Arrow Academy, but it's not. It's actually a Arrow. After that, we have Basket Case, which, boy, oh boy, do I love Basket Case. Basket Case is a title that um, was one of my most look forward to Arrow titles that was released. It was also a, a film that made my top ten of... 1982. I actually really love this cover uh, here, this slip cover, because it's so simple. It's just the wicker basket with a little hand there, and it says basket case. Look at all those special features on there. Uh, Arrow, I'm not crazy about their artwork, but sometimes they do a good job, and this release here was really good, and I, I like the artwork there. Uh, after that, we have the Black Society Trilogy. This is the Takashi Miike uh, films here. You have Rainy Dog, uh, Ley Lines, and Shinuko Third Society. Um, I haven't seen these, but it's probably like a Yakuza um, type of uh, trilogy there. Uh, Yakuza. Um, and, you know, I, I like Takashi Miike. I'm, I'm kind of dipping my toe into his filmography a little bit. I haven't seen a ton of stuff, but... Uh, from what I've seen so far, I've, I've dug definitely a weirdo filmmaker. I'll dig into that one day. After that, we have Blood Feast. Uh, I watched this for the first time. Uh, I think that, yeah, it was the first time I watched this. Um, but it felt like I've seen it before because I've heard so many people talk about it. And, uh, yeah, this was um, one of the Herschel Gordon Lewis films. Uh, they put out that massive box set, one of the cooler box sets ever released. Um, I didn't get a copy of that, but uh, now they're putting out a lot of the individual films here, so I'm starting to check those out. Uh, after that, we have the Bloodstained Butterfly, which I actually never got to. Uh, I'm not sure what it's about, if it's uh, a older film or a newer film. I actually don't know anything about it, but it looks kind of cool. Cool title as well. Uh, moving along here to one of my favorite releases by... Arrow video, and that is Brain Damage, another cover that I absolutely love. I like when they do these slip covers here with the um, sort of metallic uh, holographic look there. And uh, th man, this this one is just awesome. I love the blue brain and the, the liquid around it. Uh, brain Damage, a Frank Henenlotter film. I absolutely love it. It's one of my um, favorite movies out there. And it's grown on me significantly since the first time I've seen it, which was a couple of years ago for the podcast. This Blu-ray was um, <laughs> one that I greatly appreciated and wanted so bad uh, when it was announced. I was going to get a copy of this no matter what. Um, but yeah, this is Frank Henlotter's best film. It's just great stuff. And one of like the quality Arrow releases, this is, this is what Arrow is known for. And it's stuff like this. In my opinion. Uh, after that, we have a Mario Bava film. We have uh, Kaltiki, the Immortal Monster. This is actually pretty cool. It's like a creature from the Black Lagoon type rip off -y type movie. Um, but yeah, it's it's pretty solid. You know, it's Mario Bava. 
um it was one of his earlier films i think but yeah it's like it reminds you of like a universal monster film but it's not universal after that we have another one of my favorites and i actually like this cover art because a lot of arrows like i mentioned i don't love their cover art but this is a good one uh, Chud here, this was when they were releasing a few of the things that Image Entertainment used to own. Um, Chud, classic, you know, cannibalistic humanoid underground dwellers. I've seen this film many a time, and I enjoy it every time I watch it. Looks great on Blu-ray. Fantastic. Uh, after that, we have a release that I was actually really into. And I actually, again, love the slipcover on this. Uh, it's one of the better slipcovers they've ever done. And it is Children of the Corn. Um, this is a favorite of mine. I absolutely love this movie, and when I popped in the arrow, I just re-fell in love with it. And that happens a lot whenever uh, a film gets released on a uh, super cool edition. You kind of rediscover it. It happened to me recently with the zombie uh, from Blue Underground, that new three-disker they put out. Oh, man. I, I, I really, really love that and children of the corn was a similar experience and man i just i just love this slipcover this is one i want to keep it in like as pristine condition as possible it's like one of the nicest slipcovers they've ever done and be real careful with that one um after that we have the climber i don't know anything about this one again it looks like one of their more action or thriller titles so uh not really up my alley and then after that we have Cops vs. Thugs. Um, this is an Asian film, probably like another um, Yakuza type of um, movie. I don't know. I mean, I, it's something that I will get to eventually, just not high on my interest level. Creepshow 2. Um, this isn't the super cool edition of Creepshow 2, which I hear is really expensive now. But it's a pretty cool uh, Blu-ray release here. Love me some Creepshow 2. Um, the Raft is... Pretty cool segment, used to be my favorite, but now my favorite is the Old Chief Woodenhead, which is a great segment, a little underrated. After that, we have Crimes of Passion. And this movie is, wow, man, these, I, Eru, I didn't even realize how awesome these, these dang slipcovers are. This is a beautiful slipcover. Jeez. Um, this movie is pretty, pretty damn good. It's uh, Anthony Perkins. Um, he plays like a weirdo in this movie, sexually frustrated type guy. Um, I really enjoyed this film. It was, it was very different and hadn't really heard many people talk about it. Uh, then we have Dead End Drive-In, another um, pretty solid movie here. This is a Ozploitation, uh, super cool, you know, Australian, almost like dystopian future type of movie. Pretty cool. We covered it in our exploitation episode on the podcast. Uh, then we have Dark Water, um, which I I had recently watched this when I got this Blu-ray, so I didn't feel like cracking it and watching it again. Um, but it's a pretty solid movie. It's uh, one of the cooler films that I've seen in 2002, um, which is the year that it came out. Uh, there's an American remake, I believe. This is definitely the better version, though. Pretty solid movie. Um, Asian ghost uh, type movie. Then we have another Takashi Miike set here. This is the Dead or Alive trilogy. Now, I've only watched the first one. I, I did crack it and check out the first one. And I liked it. Very weird. I actually just recently watched it again. Uh, for It was part of the Joe Bob Marathon that he did back in uh, the Dinners of Death. And yeah, this is, this, is a, this is a weird one, man. This is a weird movie, weird ending. It's very... Takashi Miike, uh, but I'm curious to check out the sequels. I wonder if they are similar to the first one. Uh, and then we have Django Prepare Coffin. Um, the Django movies uh, are not my favorite, but my grandfather likes westerns and, and movies like this, so uh, he checked this one out. Um, thought it was alright. And uh, yeah, I think they're doing a new Django movie as well. Here we got a new one here that I haven't watched yet. Um, it is Lucio Fauci's Don't Torture a Duckling. I was kind of holding off because we might cover it next year on the podcast. And, um, you know, I kind of wanted to go in fresh for the first time um, whenever we cover that. But maybe, you know, it also did come out in 72, which is our next top 10. So I'm sure I'll get to it very soon. Uh, and then we have Doberman Cop. Again, this looks like another one that's not really up my alley. Another Yakuza film, I think. Um, but yeah. After that, we have Driller Killer. This one was really fun. Um, a 80s 
uh, slasher or a late 70s like proto slasher something like that it was pretty cool you know it was uh, I think it's video nasty uh, it's not great or anything but it's it's pretty fun and uh, an addition like this makes you appreciate the film a little bit more uh, after that we have Eric the Conqueror uh, this oh this is another Mario Baba film I didn't even realize that uh, this looks like a sword and sandals type thing I actually have finding myself liking those so this is one that I probably would check out based on the fact that it's Mario Bava and it looks like a you know sword and sandals like sword and sorcery type of movie which I would actually you know being in the right mood I would I would check it out uh, after that we have this one was really fun here Evil Ed I don't really remember a ton about it but I really did like it it was really solid it's a three disker here um, this was a film that not a lot of people knew about and it's a movie that uh, the people that did know about it were screaming for a re-release because it's been heavily out of print on DVD uh, and finally it got a blu-ray i think this is actually might be out of print again i'm not really sure but yeah i'm glad to have it because it's pretty fun after that we have a fish called wanda this was a weird release for me simply because it's just looks it stars Jimmy lee curtis but i, I just don't i have no idea what it is it just looks uninteresting to me uh, after that we have the ghoul um don't know much about that at all uh it's produced by ben wheatley and that's all i know after that we have Gruesome Twosome and uh, this one was pretty cool uh, I had fun watching this one another Herschel Gordon Lewis film um, not too bad you know pre pretty fun uh, you know it doesn't have the best that you know effects and, and stuff like that but it, yeah it's cool 72 minutes what do you expect uh, after that we have Hired to Kill a Nico Mastarakis film um, this was like a, a cheesy action over the top you know spy type thing i don't i don't really remember a whole lot about it. i did a review on it um it was it was all right it not my favorite uh one that i just slipped through the cracks the initiation this looks really cool i'm, I'm surprised that i haven't cracked this open and, and watched it yet but this this looks really cool this i mean i think this was one of those titles that might have been was it on the uh katarina nightmare um release uh, after that, we have JD's Revenge. Um, this one was pretty cool. 1976 uh, black exploitation film, uh, sort of like a possession movie. It was pretty cool. Didn't make my top ten of '76, but you know, it's fairly close. Uh, and then we have this release was really cool. Um, this is Killer Clowns from Outer Space. Another awesome slipcover there. This was a first time watch for me. I absolutely loved it. I thought it was great. It blends the comedy and horror so well because. Honestly, it's a pretty horror-heavy movie, honestly. You don't expect that with the title, but yeah, it, it, it actually delivers well on the horror. I uh, very much enjoyed that for a first-time watch. Microwave Massacre, this was just a fun, stupid movie. <laughs> I enjoyed this one very much. It's These are the type of movies that you get kind of excited when they get announced from uh, Arrow or any company because they're just so neat. <laughs> Uh, after that, we have Madhouse here. I watched this. I've seen it before. I didn't like it again. It's just a very boring movie to me. I just wasn't really into it. The cover is way cooler than the movie. After that, we have uh, Pistol for Ringo and The Return of Ringo. This is another one that um, I should probably give this to my pap. I don't even think he knows I have it back here, but he would probably enjoy this. After that, we have Pulp. And I don't really know much about this one um, at all. Doesn't necessarily look like something I would love. After that, we have Pulse. Um, another great movie. Um, I picked it up recently on Blu-ray before I actually got this Arrow uh, on an old Blu-ray release. But, yeah. I like the American remake, too. Actually, you know what? I just got this confused with another movie. I don't think I've actually seen this. So, this is another one I need to check out. Uh, after that, we have... Psychomania, I honestly didn't care for this one too much. It was okay. Kind of an interesting, like, biker movie thing, but I, I didn't love it. After that, we have Return of the Killer Tomatoes. This one was actually pretty fun. Um, I didn't mind this one at all. Um, it was cheesy, 80s, fun stuff. I, I, I thought it was cool. 
After that, we have Ronin, which Robert De Niro. I don't know. This one's a weird release, too. Not really up my alley, but, you know, like I said, they used to just send whatever. Uh, Scalpel. Haven't got to this one yet, but it looks kind of cool. You know, looks like some. Th these are the ones that look a little cooler to me, like look like I'll enjoy them a little bit more. Um, same goes for the Slayer, but turns out <laughs> the cover is way better than the movie. This movie's pretty boring. Not really that good. It, it got a cool setting. And like I said, the cover is aw this is an awesome 80s looking VHS box art, but the movie's not that great. But I, I love the cover. The cover is great. After that, we have Slugs. This is another one of my favorite Arrow covers. Just really cool, and I love Slugs. Slugs is such a good movie. Um, you know, going through these Arrows really makes me want to, you know, watch more of them because they are such good releases. Um, Stormy Monday, again, doesn't look really up my alley, but, you know. After that, we have The Suspicious Death of a Miner. This is a Sergio Martino film. Um, you know, looks alright. Uh, is it a giallo? Um, it's like a thriller or something. I don't know. I actually didn't really remember owning that. After that, we have Sutir Sitter. I don't really know what this is about. <laughs> Again, doesn't look hugely up my alley. Uh, moving along down here, we have... The Swinging Cheerleaders. Uh, I actually watched this one, and it was uh, it was all right. You know, it was like a teen, almost like a teen sex comedy type thing. I think I can't really remember it, but it was all right. Uh, after that, we have Two Thousand Maniacs. I just got this one fairly recently. Haven't cracked it yet, but uh, I really have been enjoying checking out the Herschel Gordon Lewis films. Um, Vamp. This one is another one of those films that was released with like Chud and uh, Slugs from um, Image Entertainment. It used to own the rights to these. Uh, this this is a good vampire film. It's fun. Didn't make my top ten at eighty six, but really fun. Um, we are the flesh. <laughs> Actually, this is a contemporary film. I really like this movie. I thought it was great. Uh, just very very weird, man. Very weird. Dream logic. Good stuff though. Um, the Wolf Guy, haven't checked this one out. I don't know, I couldn't tell if this was like horror or not, so kind of skipped on that one a little bit. Uh, Bird with the Crystal Plumage, very lucky to have that. Cool addition from Arrow, um, a Argento film that is fantastic. Uh, then we have The Hills Have Eyes, another great one. I think I bought this with my own money actually because I don't think screeners were sent for it, but I love The Hills Have Eyes. Um, recently just kind of um, rediscovered a love for it really solid stuff um then we have reanimator this was a great release as well i uh, really really enjoyed this I, I watched it for the first time recently when this was released i watched that was the first time i ever seen reanimator uh then we have this is kind of a uh, interesting because arrow is known for their really good boxes but their early boxes weren't the best uh this is bloodbath i actually couldn't stand this movie i watched all three versions of it that came on this edition and i didn't care for them really after that we have society this was actually my first arrow screener and uh, i did a review on it back in the day and i absolutely loved it it was a blast a uh, fun movie uh, then we have the black cats which i believe was my second ever arrow screener and uh, this features the Black Cat as well as Your Vice is a Locked Room and Only I Have a Key. Now, Black Cat isn't the greatest, but Your Vice is a Locked Room and I Have the Key is fantastic. It's a Falchi Martino box set there based on Edgar Allan Poe's story, The Black Cat. Uh, your, your Vice is a Locked Room and Only I Have the Key. I, I really like that movie. That's another 72 film. Uh, then we have the killer dames box set this i liked both of these movies the red queen kills seven times and the night evelyn came out of the grave i tried to review them on the podcast and it had been a few weeks since i watched them i couldn't remember a thing about either one of them and i couldn't tell them apart so i gave up the review um but yeah i actually sorry about the dust it's kind of dusty i need the dust um but killer dames box set that's actually a pretty good box set and then this was an awesome release as well Donnie Darko. I'm a huge fan of Donnie Darko. One of my all-time favorites. Uh, so that was a really cool release. Um, then we have a couple of sealed box sets here. We have uh, the 
Kenji Fukasaku's Battles Without Honor and Humanity trilogy. Don't know much about them. It looks like some Yakuza stuff. Uh, the house collection, which I bought with my own money. Um, I did pick this up because I thought it was pretty sick. Pretty sick release here. I haven't cracked it, but I was very excited to grab that. And uh, the U.S. house only had house one and two, but uh, this version had the full four films, the U.K. version. So I did pick that up from the U.K., uh, it was pretty cheap too. Uh, we have the female prisoner scorpion complete collection here. Haven't cracked this one. Uh, looks like something that would be kind of weird and cool, but yeah, haven't got to it yet. Then we have the Sejinu Suzuki, the early years volume two. I don't have volume one, <laughs> but you know, whatever. Um, that was another one of those weird releases that I had not too much interest in. Uh, and then after that, we have a Actually, that's funny. This They sent me a DVD of Pulp, which was on Blu-ray. That's very weird. I uh, had it up there on Blu-ray, so, huh, I don't know. Uh, then we get into the Arrow Academies, and I'm going to be honest, guys, I have not checked out a single one of these. Um, they were really just not something that I was interested in, uh, so I'm going to be quick with this. Par Cinema Paradiso, uh, the Ludwig... Van Sconce collection thing. I will check these out one day, I promise. But they just, I, I've been watching so much stuff and have had so much, been required to watch so much stuff for the show and, you know, YouTube and stuff. Uh, property is no longer a theft. I just don't know what the, what these, like, what's the difference? Like, what is the difference between Arrow Academy and regular era video because they release all kind of they don't just release horror they release all kind of cult stuff and things so I, I don't really know uh the creeping garden uh the story of sin and uh most of these like i have the first little bit of the run there but they uh that was the same one my bad <laughs> the assassin which was the sixth release the Three Brothers, which is the seventh release. And then the, what is this one here? Oh, Jesus, sorry. Um, this one is the eighth release, and it is Yoshida, Love, and Anarch Anarchism. <laughs> uh, and then we have the ninth release here, Terror in a Texas Town. That actually sounds kind of cool. Um, and then... Godard and Gorin, five films. That's kind of a cool layout there. That's the tenth one. And then we have Spotlight of a Murderer. Also sounds cool. Um, that one is the eleventh release. Then we have the Quiet Rivet collection. Um, these, I gotta admit, these are pretty cool looking. That's the twelfth release right there. And then we have... The Big Knife, which is the 14th release, so they skipped the 13th uh, for me. The Love of a Woman, which is the 15th release. 16th release is The Legend of the Holy Drinker. 17th is The Voice of the Moon. Then we have the 18th release, which is Zoology. There was the other blue case. There was the other blue case. And then we have... Is this an Arrow Academy? Uh, this is... Oh, this is the 19th release. Uh, Sasha Gierte, four films. And then after that, we have The Apartment. Oh, I think... They, weren't they just releasing this again? Uh, Air, the 20th release there. Um, and then we have a bunch of singles here. Viva La Italia, uh, 21st. The Witches, 22nd. Inferno, the 23rd. I feel like a goofball right now. Orchestra of Rehearsal, 24th. Images, 25th. And Sleeping Dogs, the 26th. Uh, and then I have the one... 
Arrow Film, uh, I think it was just Arrow Films release, Ray Harryhausen. This was a special effects documentary. Fantastic. Really good. Uh, Ray Har Harryhausen documentary. Awesome stuff. I wish they would put more stuff out like that and less stuff out like this. Um, these were just, I don't know, they kept coming. They kept, I, I mean, they released these all within a short amount of time. It's like every time I went to the post office, I'd get like three of them and I didn't really know what to do with them. They didn't seem like something I wanted to watch. A lot of the films were long and stuff. I'll get to them. I will get to them. Um, you know, I love all film, but just, I have so much obligations that I don't have time to watch everything that I would like to. And then finally, guys, these final three here. We have these MVD Rewind Collections. Savannah Smiles, I watched this one. It was alright. It was a family film. <laughs> uh, kind of um, a little hokey and weird. Uh, Return of Swamp Thing, uh, Jim Wynorski film. I'm not going to collect all these. There's just too many titles that I'm not interested in. But this was the fifth one. Uh, th this movie started off better. This what The Return of Swamp Thing started off better than... The homie and just, you know, the, the homie Wes Craven's version and just kind of tuckered out a little bit. Uh, and then we have Went to Coney Island on a Mission from God, Be Back by Five, which is fantastic. I love this movie. It was great. It was about these two childhood friends who grew up and they're all got crappy things going on in their life. And they find out that their third friend is like gone off his rocker and is pretty crazy and living homeless in on Coney Island so they go to try to save him pretty good movie like kind of a finding yourself movie so that's it for the arrows guys that is pretty much my complete arrow collection I do have a few that I have not put on the shelf yet for the next update um, but yeah pretty pretty uh, pretty cool collection there um, there is some great titles in here stuff that I absolutely love some stuff that I'm not a huge fan of but I'll check out one day. And yeah, I hope you guys enjoyed. Next up, we're going to look at my art exploitation collection, which is not complete, but uh, I do have a lot of them. So we'll check those out next time. Peace.